privilege to be with you here at this uh, chapel time and being able to speak to you. And, and uh, I just were having all kinds of thoughts as I was sitting over there. First of all, I think you all will rejoice to know that Saturday, all of the university played Golden Gate Baptist Theological Seminary in the game of soccer, and all of it won seven to four. And you would be good, it'd be good for you to know that many of our players are really quite good. I, I think I was a little bit surprised at how good people were. We just had one sprained ankle this time. Last time we had a broken wrist from Golden Gate, so it's not without certain dangers. Uh, maybe sometime in the very near future, in the winter, uh, there's a gymnasium up there, a sport hall, close to Golden Gate. It's uh, run by a church, a man's a very good friend of mine who's a pastor. We'll challenge him to a volleyball game. And we'll challenge him to a women's volleyball game and a men's volleyball game. We'll go up there and, and, and play some games with them. I think that would be fun. I enjoy chapel very much, but there is one thing that I very, very much miss, and I don't know how we're going to do it, but as I look out over the audience, I, I see some very talented people. For instance, I heard the other day we had a piano recital, and I could not come, and I felt very bad about that. And I thought to myself, how wonderful that would be if by every chapel, we had one of you, or a group of you, put on some type of special music. Uh, a solo, some of you can sing, I'm sure, uh, a solo. Uh, I don't know whether I ever told you my story about that. And, what happened was that when I was uh, young, I wanted to have the gift of music. I wanted to be able to sing. And uh, I, I never had the ability to sing. It was, it was really quite a tragedy. In fact, I, I joined the, the Junior High School Glee Club, which is a group that sings. And uh, the teacher had me in there. And everybody that joins that has to sing, you know, because that's, it's a required, I mean, it was a chorus, so I took the chorus. And the teacher came up to me and said, Bill, you're just a special person, and we need to have somebody to arrange the chairs and get all the music out of that. We'd like to have you do that for me. And I thought I would have a special job. She just got me out of the, the choir, so I didn't have to spoil the thing, but I seemed totally uh, off-key. And uh, so it's, it's been really part of a disaster with my, my music ability. I have not been able to sing. I remember one time I had a, I had a, a music director in my church. Uh, his name was also Bill, and uh, he was a fairly good singer, and I was preaching. And so I got Bill off to the side one time, and I said, now Bill, you need to preach. He said, I can't preach. I said, yes, you can. I said, everybody can preach. I said, preaching is easy. He said, got to stand up there and start talking. He said, I cannot preach. I said, yes, you can. He said, no, I can't. And I kept trying to encourage him to preach, because for me, preaching was easy. So finally he came to me and says, all right. He says, I want you to sing. I said, I can't sing. He said, yes, you can. I said, I've tried it. I can't sing. He said, everybody can sing. I said, I can't sing. <laughs> so finally we made an agreement on one Sunday night in my church. I said, all right, Bill. You preach, <laughs> and I'll sing a solo. <laughs> we did. And the church came to us afterwards and said, please, never again. <laughs> we, we don't want to have that again. But I think some of you have the ability to sing. And I would love to have you come up and just sing and begin to use these gifts of God. Or just play the uh, piano. Or to have a trio. Or to have a quartet. Or to have a duet. And then let you come up here and be a part of the service and to be able to use your gifts in this way. I would love to see that. I would love to even see... Uh, a little sketch sometime, where you would come up here and put on a little sketch. I would love to see even some of you do a, a, a dance. You know, I've seen a lot of people that have done, done spiritual dances, and they are tremendous. And just to let you all be creative as to the way you can present uh, yourselves in a way to lift God up and lift Jesus Christ up, well, I think it would be great if we could do that. Well, as I sit here and I think of all these wonderful things that we can do, I, I do have a very important announcement to make to you. Uh, we found out today, and I talked to Tracy, and I said, do our students know this? And she said, no, not yet. So I said, okay, um, I've got chapel, I'll do it. We got a, a letter from the Association of Biblical Higher Education Commission on Accreditation. I'll leave it to you. Um, at its recent meeting, the ABHG Commission's committee review requests for substantive changes. Based on this review, the Commission acted to approve 
the major substantive change for Alton University to initiate an extension site at 6 Barclay Street, New York, New York. So that means that we now have permission from the ABAT to have our extension in New York. This is an answer of prayer, it really is. And uh, I think that it's wonderful that we go to New York this uh, weekend, uh, because now we go to our extension this weekend, okay? But we still have to have the approval of the uh, New York State and uh, Tracy and the others, uh, Jonathan, working on that very much. The Commission also acted to approve the major substantive change for Oliver University to expand its current degree level to a Master of Theology, an MA in Music, an MA in Journalism, an MA in Graphic Arts, and an MA in Inform Information Technology. Also, the Commission approved the major substantive change for Oliver University to expand at current degree levels with a BA in business, a master's in business administration, a certificate in language, and an MA in translation and interpretation. So in reality, we received all of the requests that we made, which uh, I told basically it would be a miracle if we get it, and yet the Lord is very good at performing miracles. So that means we've got everything that we need. I uh, also got a, um, a uh, email from one of our professors at the doctoral program. We now have a PhD program. We have a doctor of ministry program. We have a PhD program. And I received a, uh, a letter from our uh, doctor, uh, Thomas Schirmacher. I think Dr. Schirmacher was here. He spoke to you. You probably remember him. And Dr. Schirmacher said, Bill, they have changed the laws in Germany and in, in Europe. This is all of Europe. I don't know how this affects Asia, but it, it does affect Europe. And they said that prior to uh, a recent decision that was made, no European school would recognize uh, automatically a doctorate that came from the United States. They had to go through a particular process. For instance, I had two doctor's degrees, and it took me a year to get my two doctor's degrees approved. And finally, they approved it, and they said, all you've got to do is send us a $1,000, and we'll give you the certificate. I left Europe, and I never did give them a thousand dollars, but it was rather difficult. For Dr. Schirmacher said they have made a new arrangement with uh, the accreditation people in the United States that any university that is accredited in the United States for a bachelor's degree and a master's degree in that subject is also will be recognized at the PhD level. So that now means that anybody that gets a PhD degree from us at all the university it will be recognized by all of the European common market countries. And if it's recognized by the European common market countries, it will be recognized probably by most of the other parts of the world. So in reality, we've made some tremendous steps forward just recently. I think that we can praise the Lord on that. What I'd like to talk to you about is from my favorite area of scripture, the Song of Solomon, and we're going to be talking a little bit about the Bible. I am deeply concerned about our present world situation. I spend quite a bit of time trying to study the world, looking at it, seeing what's happening in the political realm, trying to understand Afghanistan, Iraq, trying to understand the relationship between Christianity and Islam, trying to understand the political scene in Europe, trying to understand what is taking place in Latin America. And so I do spend a lot of time on that. It's kind of my hobby. I don't watch television except for the news and sports, but nothing else. I, I don't have time because I'm trying to understand what's happening. And I must admit that I am a little bit fearful, to be truthful with you. I think I spoke one time to one of the groups about Laodicea, the church at Laodicea, which represents to a degree the church in our particular period of time. And it was a church where God said, uh, you're lukewarm, and because you're lukewarm, I'm going to vomit you out, I'm going to throw you out of my mouth, because I don't like you being lukewarm. Well, I've been trying to understand the church of Jesus Christ in relationship to of the world today. And this is what I've discovered. I've discovered that there are basically two churches. One is a church in the West, in what used to be the Christian part of the United States, where the center of Christianity used to be uh, in Europe. It used to be in Lyon, France. And one time it used to be in Switzerland. At one time it used to be down there in Yugoslavia. At one time it was the city of Jerusalem. But it continued to move to the north and to the west and moved all the way up. It kind of wound up in Lyon, France, not too many years ago, probably about 30 years ago. The center of Christianity was in Lyon, France. Now the center of Christianity 
is now in Mali, in Africa. It has rapidly moved to the south, and it's rapidly beginning to move back to the east. And so what is happening is that Christianity is growing is uh, exponentially, it is very successful in certain parts of the world. It's successful in Asia, successful in Latin America, it's successful in Africa. And we can praise God for that. It's not successful in the Middle East, it's not successful in Western Europe, it's not successful in Eastern Europe, and it's not successful in the United States. And those areas at one time were, were Christian are now becoming more and more non-Christian all the time.